Hey guys, so today I'm going to demonstrate how to use Google's Fusion tables for marketing. So what I did first is I went to Moz and I just pulled my backlinks. Oops, analytics. And I've already pulled this, but I'll just show you what I did to get it ready. First of all, I changed this to my root domain. I could have chosen a subdomain because I only have one subdomain, but I wanted to make sure I also got any links to analytics.com instead of dub dub dub. I only want external and I go ahead and pull all links because I can always filter out the nofollow links. I do really like this option by the way that Moz gives you to group by subdomain. The nice thing about this is it kind of gives you a pivot table of your backlinks, which is really nice. So you can see here that it puts it in descending order by domain authority, and then you can expand any one of these. Oh, I have a link from entrepreneur.com. And then see the individual page or, or pages. Once your report is finished running, you can fire it up in Excel, and here's what mine looked like. But I wanted to do some cleanup. First of all, I didn't want all of these columns pulled into my fusion table. So I just decided which ones that I wanted and got rid of the others. But I also added a column. So I added this category column to capture the category on my site that's receiving the link. And you'll see how I use that in a fusion table filter. I just use this formula here and I'll include this in the blog post. It's just a combination of the mid function, search function, and if error. One thing you may want to change is a home page. So I double checked my data and I knew for sure that any URL that didn't have a category was the home page, which just means if you get an error because there is no category, then go ahead and put in the word home page. If you don't know that, then you may want to change that to other or miscellaneous, you know, whatever works for you. But then I didn't want to pull these formulas into my fusion table. So I took this and just pressed command or control A and copied it, came into my final tab and pasted as values. So you can just do that by right clicking and choosing paste special values. It's very similar on the PC. And doing this is just going to remove those formulas. So now it's raw text. One other thing I did is you'll notice when we get to the fusion tables that the preview, when you hover over one of the nodes, and this will make a lot more sense when we get into the network graph, but you don't get a lot of screen real estate with them. So I go in here and I actually remove my domain. So I just do this and I say, okay, any reference to analytics.com, replace with nothing and www.analytics.com and if anyone's linking to the secure version there was one and then I'll just do a quick scan to make sure I didn't miss anything weird and everything looks pretty copacetic so then I just took this, copy, and paste it into this final doc. I just want to take a look, make sure everything is the way I want it, and it is. So I'll just save that. And now we're ready to go into Google. So to get to the Fusion Tables, you can just go to google.com Fusion Tables and choose create a fusion table. The first thing we're going to do is choose our file. Here's mine. Click next. Fusion tables are pretty good at identifying the header row. Mine was really easy because it was the first row of my data, but if your header row is in another row, then you can select it here. Here I'm just going to change it, analytics.com backlinks. 
I'll allow export. Now, if I were making this publicly available, I would fill this out with my name, a link to my site, and a pretty detailed description. I'm not going to make this publicly available, so there's no sense in going through all of this effort. Okay, so now you can see my table is here in the Fusion table, but this isn't where the magic happens. This is where the magic happens. So I'm going to click this little red plus sign and choose Add Chart. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to work with a network graph. So the first thing I want to point out here is you want to choose two of your columns and show a relationship between those two columns. If I select this up here, I can see my columns. And I knew before I even came in here that I wanted to show the relationship between URL and target URL. So I'm going to keep this as URL, and the URL is just the page on someone else's site that's linking to my site. And then I'm going to choose Target URL here. And if I zoom in, you can already see things kind of taking shape. But I'm going to choose Link is Directional. It just adds little arrowheads, which is kind of cool. And then I'm also going to choose Color by Columns. Now what this does is assign the color blue to the first option you choose and the color orange to the second option. You can also choose to set the size of your nodes by page authority or domain authority. Now Google recognized that there were only two columns in my table that had numerical values. So those are going to be the only two columns I can choose from. I'll go ahead with domain authority. Now once I have all of my options, one thing you always have to remember to do, and this took me some getting used to, is you have to go in here and update this number here. So Google's always going to give you just a fraction of your total nodes, and I want to get all of them. Now another thing worth noting is Google will only process 100,000 rows. So even if you filter the data, and I'll show you how to use the filters, and your total filtered rows gets you under that 100,000 mark, it still won't matter. Google will only look at the first 100,000 rows of your data. So you want to make sure that you massage your data and filter it do whatever you have to do to get that original number of rows under 100,000. And when I did this for your Tango, that proved to be pretty challenging. I basically had to remove any no-followed links and a number of things. I also removed our video subdomain, and I figured I could analyze that separately. So if your site is larger, you really have to kind of keep that in mind. How can I massage the data to get my final row count under 100,000 before I pull it into Google? That obviously wasn't a concern with my little blog here. So I just updated that to 1009 to get all of my nodes, and these are nodes here. So a few things I'm going to point out. If you want to zoom in or out, you could use these buttons here, or you can use your mouse wheel. I tend to use my mouse wheel. So if I zoom all the way out and then click and drag to kind of center my network graph, I can see all of my data here. So now I can zoom in and start to get more insights. So you can see here, if I hover over this, this is indicating in a little overlay that this is my home page. If I hover over here, you don't see the overlay. This is a bug in Google's Fusion tables. If you run into that, you can either zoom out, though I find that a little inconvenient if I'm trying to zoom in for a reason. You can also just click and drag and move the node that you're looking at higher up on the screen, and then you'll see the URL more easily. And what this is showing me is if I take one of these nodes, Let's say I take this node here and I kind of pull it out so I can see it a little easier. Yeah, sometimes it'll do that. It doesn't want to pull out because I have some sites linking to multiple pages and so it's pulling it back in. 
maybe another one I may be able to pull out. Nope, you can see some of the nodes on the far left, they're kind of torn between uh, two different sites. But I'll just zoom in on, let's see. Ah, I'll zoom in on this. This is my campaign tagging guide. So it's not surprising that one, I have a high number of links. It's a pretty comprehensive resource, uh, but also that I have links from pretty high domain authority sites, which is indicated by the size of the node. If I just wanted to look at this page, I can use the filter and filter by target URL. And I could say, uh, I only want to see URLs that contain the word campaign. I probably don't have too many. Let's see. Again, anytime you change anything, you need to update this. And now I'm just looking at backlinks to my campaign tagging guide. I could filter this data further by adding another filter. So let's say I want to filter by domain authority. And let's say I only want to see links from sites that have a domain authority somewhere between 70 and 100. And now that obviously really narrows the field here. But when I hover over some of these links, you'll notice that some of these are from bit.ly URLs. So let's say I don't really care about bit.ly or owly URLs and I want to filter those. I could add another filter by URL and I could say, let me identify bit.ly. And if I click on this little cheeseburger icon here, I could change this to exclude selections. So by default, when I hit find, it's going to isolate just the URLs that contain bit.ly, but instead I could exclude by that selection. And let me update this. I'm not gonna go through the steps of also excluding Ali. You get the idea, but you can see here, I have a link from the next web. Wow, didn't know that. Gumroad, awesome. And let's see if there's anything else. I prospect and some pretty cool URLs here. Okay, now if I want to close out of these, I can just click these X's and close this. Okay, but I wanna show a couple other things here. So I could use any of these columns so I've included as a filter. So let's say, for example, I only wanna see links that are passing equity. Then I could choose link equity and then select yes. And now I'm only looking at links from sites that are passing equity. And you can see that here. And you can zoom and analyze however you want. I could also say, all right, remember that category column I had? I could say, I only want to look at backlinks to blog pages. And let's update this. 628. And now I'm just looking at backlinks to my blog pages. And you can see here, and if I hover over this one here, this isn't surprising. This is my blog post that contains my hundreds of tools for marketers. Here's my campaign tagging guide. You get the idea. And you can get as sophisticated as you want. So I could say, I only want to look at links to my blog that pass equity, or I could have pulled in data from Google Analytics. So I could then filter by, let's say, 
destination URLs that have gotten at least a thousand sessions in the past month or generated at least $500 in revenue. I mean, the sky is the limit with this. If you started marrying your backlinks data with data from other tools such as analytics or any other tools, Screaming Frog, you name it, then you just have more data to pull into your network graph to analyze the effectiveness of your content. A few final notes I'll make here is I usually go in here, as I've already done, and rename the tabs. You can do that by just clicking Rename. And then also you can publish your Fusion Table visualization. To do that, just go to Tools, Publish. Now, by default, now it's set to private. It didn't used to be this way. You can change the visibility here. So I can set this to anyone with the link, which is what I'll typically do so that I can embed the visualization, let's say, in a blog. So I could go in here and choose oops, publish. And let's say I want this 600 pixels wide and 500 pixels high. And then I can just grab the iframe, which I'll actually do. One last note is that if you want to access your Fusion table later, you can do that by going into Google Drive. It'll be there waiting for you. So here are just a few different ways that you can use Fusion tables to analyze backlinks to your site.